There are usually two different ways a compressor can fail. A mechanical failure, which would be a scroll failure, the bearings, or any type of seizing up problems. The other problem might be an electrical failure. That might be an open winding or shorted winding, or maybe even a grounded winding. Before condemning a compressor, a few things need to be checked. First, we want to check the voltage. We need to make sure that your voltage is within 10% of the nameplate voltage. The next step, you'd want to make sure that the run capacitor is working properly. After turning off the power, you're going to then disconnect the C, the S, and the R terminals from the compressor. An ohmmeter would be used to ohm out the compressor. You may get a reading such as 25 ohms, 35 ohms, or maybe even 2.3 ohms. You can also get a reading called OL. This is overload. OL would be an infinite ohm reading, or a lot of ohm readings if you go back to the old analog scale. This is going to be a lot of resistance, which means that we have little to no current path for the current to flow. Measuring the compressor, we will start from C to S. Measuring from C to S, you should have an ohm reading. Measuring from C to R, you should have a lower ohm reading. And if you measure from R to S, it's like measuring the C and the R together. A zero ohm reading will mean that there is a path but no resistance. This is called a short circuit. Checking the IPR. The IPR is an internal pressure relief valve. When the compressor runs but won't pump, that's an indicator that the IPR is popped open. Typically on an R22 circuit, when the pressure gets to 375 to 425, the IPR will release or open. On a 410A system, it's typically going to be in a 550 to 625. Those pressures are starting to get high and we want the pressure relief valve to open up to save the compressor. If the IPR opens, disconnect the power to allow the compressor to shut off and equalize. The IPR will reset. If the IPR doesn't reset, turn the system off once again. We're going to put a temporary access port about six inches away from the hot gas line on the compressor. If the pressure taken at that access valve is equal to the pressure leaving the condenser, then the IPR is popped open and it won't reset. If you're seeing the pressure is much higher on the hot gas line, this means that you may have a restriction inside the condenser. Don't condemn the compressor yet. Next, we're going to identify the electrical readings using an ohmmeter. If the compressor is electrically checked okay, we will use the ohmmeter to check from common to R, from the common to S, and from the S to R. Remember, the common to run is going to be our lowest reading. Common to start will be our higher reading, and the start to run will be the combination of common to start and common to run. If you get an ohm reading from any one of those terminals to ground, then you have a grounded compressor. Notice the graphic. On an open start winding, you have an ohm reading from C to R, you have an OL ohm reading from C to S, and you have an OL from R to S. And you have an OL reading from any one of those terminals to ground. We can have the same situation on the run winding, which would be an open run winding. Open thermal overload. Thermal overload is a temperature activated switch which is right in line with the common line. The thermal overload opens, it will stop the current from flowing to the start in the run winding. Just because the thermal overload is open, we should not condemn the compressor yet. Let's look at what our ohm readings would be. From common to start, you would have an OL reading. From common to run, you're going to have an OL reading. But looking from the start to the run, you're going to see that there's a path for us to get an ohm reading. If you get these readings, you will have to wait up to eight hours before that compressor can reset. Don't condemn it while it's still warm. The next would be a grounded compressor. On a grounded compressor, if you have a path from any of these terminals to the case, 
It's going to trip your breaker immediately. This situation is going to indicate that you have a compressor failure. Shorted windings. When all of the windings melt together in the start winding, you're going to see that you have a path but zero resistance. This will allow the current to flow very, very quickly through that start winding. When the current flows very quickly, it causes the breaker to trip. When bringing back compressors with warranties, we'd all like to get through the warranty process the first time. So quickly identifying whether it's a ground or a short or an open will help the counterperson be able to get the warranty process handled the first time.